Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number two. My name is Keith. I am here with Doug. Doug, how does season two, episode two find you? I have to make sure I don't say season one because we did it for like all last year. <laughs> yeah. Season two, episode two, we're doing good. You know, well, we got a lot of good things to talk about today. I think uh, this is going to be a good year. It'll be it's going to be awesome. We're going to be doing some some new stuff. Now, I do want to address something right out the gate. Season two at the very end kind of went off the rails. If you were watching the YouTube or the Spotify, you probably couldn't tell by audio. But at the very tail end, we had some technical difficulties. I, I'm I'm sitting there having a conversation who I thought with Doug and I look up and his face is like frozen. I'm like, is he having a stroke? <laughs> What's going on? And I so my, I wrapped it up yeah. quick. That's why if the last episode ended very abruptly, like that's because I'm like, I don't think he's coming back. I'm just going to wrap this bad boy up. What happened? <laughs> so I saw you the whole time, but I looked up at my screen and it was definitely frozen. Okay. I believe uh, technical difficulties. I had a little too much power in one USB hub. So yeah, lesson okay. learned on that. I think okay. hopefully to go today. Yeah. Be smooth sailing, but I had to address it right. because I was like, oh, crap. But we weren't going to redo the show. So, but if I freeze, uh, you, I, I leave it in your capable hands and you yeah. are going to do great. You drop and come back. That's what you do. So, yeah, I will try. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, I don't have any technical problems. All right, everybody. We have some very weird, interesting news for you. Uh, so, let's oh, go yeah. ahead and <laughs> queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. All right, I'm going to go ahead and Doug, why don't you start up that very first one? Because this one we're going to do a live demo on, if I remember correctly, while I get the yeah. uh, screen share going here. So the first one uh, hits close to home for me. It is the Pixel A Pro, which I am currently uh, rocking in my everyday carry. Uh, let's you check people's temperature. So the Pixel A Pro came out uh, with their keynote address, you know, saying, hey, we have a thermometer on the pixel 8 pro and people are like okay why do we have that <laughs> uh, point. and they're like look we're gonna get fda uh, clearance you can actually check temperatures so the backstory that i read is this idea was developed during the height of covid well oh. yeah great your phone takes your temperature you're gonna check your covid temperatures every day but now that we're out of covid it seems like a gimmick but yeah. uh yeah, I just got my phone updated, and uh, you're gonna, gonna do it live show. for us. All right. Yeah, hopefully I'm not sick or anything. Oh dear God! Thank God this is a remote podcast. Right. You stay away from me. So, you um, I'm not. Uh, I don't have a great studio here, but I'll try to show. Okay. So here's see. the app. Okay, you'll we see, see the app up at the top. You'll see you can measure an object. Okay. So yeah, I cool. have a glass of tea here. We'll do that first, okay. real quick. So wait, wait. Does it do it through the camera? How does it measure? The there is a sensor, sensor right on the side. Oh. On the side, okay. Yeah. Was gonna, so do you put it to your forehead? Down. Yeah. Oh. So wow. it's not all the way down in the glass. My tea is sitting at about 50 degrees. 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little warm. All right. I need to put some more ice in there. Here yeah. we go. We're going to see if Doug is sick or a zombie. So this little, the white bar is a camera sensor. The bottom one is the temperature sensor. Okay. So everybody on audio, he's showing the back of the phone uh, where yeah. the camera uh, read a module is, and there is a white sensor on there, and that's what he was pointing to. So the first thing you gotta do is select your age range. Okay, and so it goes an uh, zero to three months, three to thirty-six yep. months, three plus years. Okay. So and it's very very clear instructions. Sweet. You will, and I'm ready to go. You will hit the button. You'll go until you feel it vibrate. Okay. So you actually press it to you. For, you wipe it across your forehead. Well, you get very close until okay. it kind of detects the heat. Okay. And you will move it to your temple. So I'll okay. go ahead and start it. All right. Well, here we go. This is live taking Doug's temperature. Well, you'll listen to it after it happens, but we didn't even test this. Hope it works. 97.1. .1. Wow. You're running low. What's up, man? I am. So it's been running low. I don't know if it's accurate. I don't have a thermometer with me now. I was say, I tell to tell Ashley to stop being so tight and let right. you turn the heat on in the house, for God's sakes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I probably I don't have socks on right now. My feet are pretty cold. So. But yeah, you know, maybe so, maybe it runs low. Just maybe it's got to be calibrated or be done a few times too. But that's pretty cool. Uh, so the one thing they've done, and I'm not a big Fitbit user, 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I need to get out in the gym more, but you can add your daily temperatures to your Fitbit journal or your Fitbit uh, app. That's cool. I don't know if people take their temperatures uh, on the daily. Maybe. That's cool. My thought to you, it it seems cool. I mean, it seems really awesome during the time of COVID. But I think that since we're out of the main wave of COVID, hopefully, I don't know that has such a big appeal to the audience. Unless you look at it as just the convenience factor of you don't have to go find, you know, your kid is complaining or you're wondering about yourself. You can just grab your phone real quick and check uh, maybe some applications for hospitals because you're already using some mobile devices with other medical apps. You know, so maybe there's some other use cases uh, in which that this could be handy. Oh, and so easy to use. I mean, very clear instructions, like I said. So and it's only a matter of time before like your watch can do it, too. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Very cool. That's an awesome one. Uh, this next one's weird. <laughs> yep. And uh, I'll let you introduce it, and I've got okay. a lot to say. Okay. So, <clears throat> the I don't know Doug's mentioned this before. He's a huge fan of uh, the, the most recent Dune series. Uh, there is a Dune 2 that is going to be coming out, but uh, it was unveiled that there's a popcorn bucket. Now, what's interesting about this popcorn bucket, it has one of the sandworms coming out of the top of the popcorn bucket with its little teeth, I guess, so that you can say that you have to put your hand through. It's really weird. But that's not that's not it. It's going viral because um, a lot of people are making jokes about it. Uh, and I'll scroll through here. You know, we try to keep this family friendly on the mainline podcast here. Now, if we do some of our specials, you know, we may have to have some kind of a disclaimer. But, uh, you know, there's some funny ones in here. Uh People are just making fun of it. You go down through the list here and they're like, uh, you know, honey, are you OK? You barely you barely effed your Dune 2 promotional popcorn bucket. It's because it looks um, like a sex organ. Well, that's what we'll just yeah. say. So what are your thoughts on this? There's people putting uh, other people like they're they're editing yeah. photos with people laying on it. And <laughs> it looks so to me, you know, being a cat owner, you're a cat owner as well, I believe it looks like. A paw cleaner first. <laughs> a paw cleaner. I mean, not trying to be dirty, not trying to be anything. Yeah. It looks like you put your little cat's paw in there and clean it off. Uh, to describe it, you know, it's uh, sitting on a normal cup you get at the movie theater. There's a little sand mound and then the worm coming out. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have seen. So I went on Reddit, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. not going to share anything I saw there. But probably I wild. had to see the worst case scenario. <laughs> and it was bad. I'm like, nope, cool. <laughs> I've seen I, enough. I think good try, Dune, but no, you failed. What were they thinking? Unless it's on purpose, and they knew that people would make fun of it. Oh, know? maybe it is. Yeah, I mean, April Fool's Day is a long ways away. So that is a good point. That is a good point. So, yeah, that was a weird one. I saw that, and I had to, I had to put that on there. So, <clears throat> and I'm sure the memes are going to continue to roll in. Oh, I'm sure they will. I mean, All the right. very last one, I wouldn't go down there, but it's Quagmire from Family Guys. I know. I saw that. I did actually go down there. It's kind of funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to keep on rolling here. So in 2024, you know, we're starting, we're kind of the beginning of a new year. Everybody's looking ahead. Rumors are starting to break that the Nintendo Switch version 2, they're calling it just the Switch 2, uh, will be released this year, potentially. Um, and along with it, there have been leaks room. Now these are all unsubstantiated, but there are filings with some different government agencies and things of that, that lend itself to credibility and people, you know, how they are, they start digging through like earnings calls on a lot of companies, whether it's chip manufacturers that makes for the devices uh, or Nintendo themselves. And some of, uh, the rumors is that it will have a larger screen, like an eight inch, um, screen. Now, it will not, uh, according to what this has, uh, it will not have OLED, which is interesting because for the first Switch, they did a re-release with an OLED screen. So yeah. maybe that's what they're going to do again, where the first initial launch will be a, you know, just a straight-up LCD, and then they'll do OLED you know, afterward. Who knows? But again, these are rumors. Uh, of course, it's going to have to probably have a faster processor in it. Uh, the biggest thing is you know, just talking about that the size people are excited that's going to have a larger screen uh the price point i've heard on this now i didn't talk about this but i did read it this week the leaked price point is about four hundred dollars uh so a little bit pricier but you know they're capitalizing on the popularity of the of the device so 
don't know. Have you met, have you messed with the switch at all, Doug? I know. Yeah, I actually used to have a switch. Um, you I had one. That I never. Yeah. Well, I, didn't I had one. I didn't yeah, know that. I had one. Yep. So I had one when it first came out. My sister in law got me one, but uh, unfortunately, I never played it, and it just sat around. I should have kept it now because you know they added it's N64 a great device. games, Super Nintendo oh, yeah. games. They added so much stuff, of course, after I got rid of it. So yeah, now you got to pay for that service though to get those retro yep. games. Um, I had that as well, but I dropped it just for financial reasons. But um, I will say this: I played the heck out of my Switch, but and I have the OLED version now because I even upgraded. I loved it. I still love it. I still have it. Um, but since I got my steam deck, I don't mess with it much anymore. Um, mainly because I have my massive steam library at my disposal and portable. And of course, all of, we talked about this before, all of my old ROMs, my old arcade and super Nintendo and Genesis games are all on. I just have such a massive library now that's portable. I just don't mess with it much. So, but I will say this, it is an incredible piece of hardware with some amazing games. I know. Uh, we've had Brian on the show. He loves the the, the device. Um, so it's a, it's a great system. So I'm curious about whether or not there'll be shortages. Are they going to shoot for Christmas time if this is true? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, and you talk about the price point. I think uh, everything I've learned from Shark Tank, I'm using my expertise here, but uh, <laughs> OLED, I think it'll push their price point out of reach. That $400, if that's true, uh, I'm on Best Buy right now. Just an example, I can go to Walmart or whatever, but Best Buy came up $499 for the PlayStation 5 Slim. And then you're looking at the Xbox Series X for $399. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of got to say a big powerhouse console or a little handheld with some limitations uh, handheld device so that is true the, the only advantage doesn't seem to be good to me i, don't I will know. say though that they have been porting like there's some games that people just don't know how like doom and doom eternal they ported to and like how do they get these games to run on this device and then the last of zelda was being hailed as uh black magic like there's no other way to put it like how in the yeah. world but that's nintendo right they've always had underpowered hardware but they're so good at optimization on their games that they don't need to have, you know, crazy hardware specs. Yeah. So it's to their advantage, but I do think you're right. I think the faster processor, what they're going to do and that those kinds of probably a better battery, uh, all of that's probably going to be th what the cost is going into. So, you know, for the mass audience, I would like to see, and I don't know if they'll do it, maybe some type of trade-in program. You know, you trade in your Switch One for, like, cell phones. I don't know if that applies to gaming consoles as well. I kind of did that with mine, uh, but it wasn't through Nintendo. It was uh, GameStop, believe it or not. I mean, they actually uh -oh. came through for me. I know, they actually... You hear all the horror stories of GameStop. But, but it, it went really well. In fact, they gave yeah. me such a good deal on my original one. I think I end up only paying like 50 bucks for the OLED. Oh my gosh. And That's you get a bigger a screen and bright. Right yeah. Yeah. So, you know, credit to them. They, and it was a, one of them things where I had to catch it just right, you know, it, where they just, I saw that the trade in deals were so good. And I was like, you know, I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to do it. Cause it's like, why wouldn't you for 50 bucks? You know, it's like buying a game. So, yeah. All right. We're going to keep on trucking here. <clears throat> I don't know if you heard this bad news for not just the video game industry, but the tech industry. Uh, but it's controversial in that uh, Microsoft announced this week that they're laying off 1,900 Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox workers. That's about 8% of Microsoft's 22,000 uh, employees within their gaming divisions. Now, it's important to know here, Microsoft's becoming a behemoth in the industry because of all of their acquisitions. Here's what's really hard about this <clears throat> and why a lot of people are upset. So when they let these people go, uh, around the same time, they also posted like they're a trillion dollar company in profits. Like they, they're so That's profitable. Crazy. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, hold up. And then of course I've even seen in some situations, um, people cited like in the mid two thousands when Nintendo around the Wii U time, they were having major issues and they were going to go through a layoff. Their CEO and their board of directors actually cut their pay in order to keep people employed. And well, that's, yeah, and he famously said, look, if you're going to be making innovative software, you need people to be in a good mindset and being yeah. having the threat of layoff is not good for your mindset. I mean, definitely a different business style, you know, obviously, with their approach. 
Uh, but you know, the other thing is tied to this is the criticism of the revenue. Uh, this is happening in the tech industry across the board. There are so many layoffs. So it isn't just gaming. Almost every major tech company is going through rounds of layoffs. And it started toward the tail end of last year. And they're citing um, that they that was like a basically a bubble that when COVID hit, all of these tech companies, including game companies, staffed up their, their technology people. And now it's catching up with them. And, th- and that's what they're citing. But what a lot of people are pointing out is, their profit margins are not showing that the companies are hurting because typically when you do a layoff, you think, Hey, you know, I need to keep the doors open here. I need to survive, but the profit margins aren't showing that. So that's why it's controversial. So it's a bummer. Hate seeing this, you know, people that, especially in the industry, it's already, it's already a tough industry anyway, the gaming industry, because it's feast or famine, you know? And so I don't know, bro. Yeah. Yeah, my thoughts on that is I wonder if uh, Microsoft, you know, is a huge company. I think uh, reading over here an article, they acquired Activision for about $70 billion. Yep. So I wonder if dropping some of that talent, uh, trying to get some uh, profit back in the green instead of the red. Yep, some ROI, some return on investment. Make that price tag they paid not quite so bad, right? Now, talking about layoffs in the tech industry, I went over to uh, NPR. They have a great article about Microsoft, Google, Amazon, TikTok, Meta, several other Silicon Valley companies are dropping employees. Uh, They're talking about 75 tech companies just this year have laid off 21,000 employees. I mean, that is impressive. It's a rough market. Impressive in in a bad way. I, I feel for the people losing their jobs. I really worry, and I hope it's not the case, that uh, we're switching to AI to do some of these uh, everyday tasks. That's some of the theory. The workforce. Yeah. yeah, that's some theory. No, what you just said is exactly a, a fear and a concern that for some menial types of work that um, yeah. it very well could, that could be playing a part in it. I, you know, it, there's there's never a silver bullet for these things. If I were to guess, it's multifaceted. Uh, yeah. it, is, it is corporate bottom line. It is recovery costs on acquisitions. Uh, it is increasing profit shares. It, you know, it is, uh, it's all of those things, right? But it's also the opportunity of AI and how, what role it can play. It probably is some level. They did staff up during COVID. So I think it's all of those things that come into play. I think the concern that I have is um, when's the leveling out? Uh, because how long can this sustain? I mean, that's, that's, an, that's insane. That's a massive flood of people on a job oh, market. Oh my gosh, yeah. And so... Yeah, I hope it rebounds. I really do in some way, somehow. Um, so we'll see. That's a depressing one. <laughs> yeah. We'll get, we'll get on to something a little happier yet. <clears throat> now, you know what? We're going to close out this nerd news with good old faithful, which I'm... It, 2024, so it's funny. Last year, we kept saying it over and over in 2023. It's the year of AI because everything broke with... You know, we kept kind of tracking it. I, with this next series of articles... I have a feeling that it is what we talked about last year when we were like, whoa, this could happen. This could happen. The whole black mirror kind of uh, twilight zoney stuff of what are people going to do with these and how is it going to be crazy with AI? So the next one, it's a weird one. Uh, apparently on X Twitter for, you know, the old name, uh, okay. there was a campaign of trolls. They created deep fakes, AI based deep fakes of taylor swift that were inappropriate images i've not seen any of them i don't know what they entailed i just know they were bad and they flooded twitter x if you will and the company did respond very quickly and and took them down and this was it was crazy they estimated that 45 million people saw it before it was eventually removed uh and they're saying it's one of the biggest uh spoofs that they've seen Uh, and they compared it to like you know ai fake generated pornography uh, and there's a lot of people who hate Taylor Swift, you know, I, and maybe it's because the Super Bowl's coming and they, they don't want the Kansas City Chiefs to win. I don't know. Yeah, people don't get kind of caught up in that. <laughs> who knows? But I don't know. This this is what we talked about, like with misinformation. Uh, this got so bad that, well, first of all, before I jump to that, the uh, Microsoft weighed in on it about how bad it is. And the and Microsoft was even saying, whoa, this is how you do bad things with AI and what we have to be careful of and why we need controls. Then the White House jumped in on it and they were like look this is very alarming we need regulations you know and this is going to be a tough thing to regulate in my opinion 
yes, they've already said that, hey, if you know, you've got uh, AI generated content, you got to slap a logo on it. I mean, but the people that are doing this, they're, you know, they're not doing it for money. They're doing it just to troll. So this is getting kind of weird. So what are your thoughts on all these deep fakes and where is this going to go? Here's the other thing. It's an election year, Doug. Yeah. I mean, it's nuts. There was already a a lady to prove a point. She is a researcher and she created an audio of Joe Biden endorsing, talking about his dad and endorsing somebody. It was not Joe Biden, but she did it to say, listen, this is what you can do. And it took me about 10 minutes. We're heading into election year between deep fake video, deep fake images, deep face audio. Wow. This is going to be nutty. It's definitely scary. I mean, I won't spend too much time on it. You know, we've talked a lot last year about AI, and I'm sure we're going to talk this year about AI. It's advancing really, really quickly. The uh, deep fake thing, you know, I've always said putting on the tinfoil hat. I I hate to do that, but election year, I'm worried that people are going to put out political ads or stuff that uh, those that don't really know about AI and its technology, like, the mass voting public in America is going to say, well, that yeah. looks exactly like Biden or yep. Trump or whoever your political candidate is. And so. it's scary. And, and, yeah. it, and I just don't, I don't know. There's a lot of people who I, are, yeah. and I'm not trying to be, you know, overly negative, but there's a lot of uneducated yeah. people out there who are kind of ignorant. They'll believe whatever you tell them. Uh, and if you have something even marginally convincing enough, I mean, there's already people who believe the most craziest cracked out things and they don't even have good sources of data, right? And imagine giving them a good fake that's hard to, oh my gosh, it's going to be, hmm. it scares me. This this is the part, I love AI. I think it's amazing. I think it's got a lot of potential. It's fun. But uh, yeah, this is this is the thing. It it in the hands of the wrong people, it's honestly what what worries me. It's like, Handing an AK-47 to a, a chimpanzee, a loaded AK-47 to a chimpanzee. Let's see what happens. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. As far as the sharing content like that, there's always going to be a troll. There's always going to be yeah. a spammer. There's always going to be, you know, a hacker, whatever they call themselves. Someone's always going to do something nefarious and bad with something that's supposed to be meant for good. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, so we'll see. All right. Take a break from the AI. There'll be one last AI one to go on, but our second to last one that we have here. Uh, I'll go ahead and let you run down this one. Yeah. So uh, Apple is. Uh, let me get it pulled up here. I got all the. I tripped uh, him up, didn't he? AI on that Twitter stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Apple is finally going to allow full versions of Chrome and Firefox to run on the iPhone. You know they are predominantly using their browsers, their in-house stuff. So I think this is a big step for them. It is. Um, it was forced, though. That's important. Yeah. Which, and I I don't agree with that completely. Mm-hmm. Now, you're an iPhone guy. The European Union seems to be forcing Apple to do a lot of stuff. To me, they're a private company. And I don't really see the the need, the necessity. I mean, the so they forced them to do the USB-C chargers. Okay, cool. Well, that helps a little bit. But, I mean, iPhone's iPhone, you know, get a lightning charger. And then they forced them, uh, there was another decision, and you may remember, they forced them to do something else. Oh, um, the new text message uh, yep. standard, right? Yep. Yes. And there's many more like this coming down the way. Yeah. Yep. So so my thought real quick on that is why does the EU get to tell a company how to run their company? So uh, the EU is an interesting marketplace. So. First, it's important to note, as a reminder, the EU is comprised of a lot of countries. It's a very uh, well-populated region. It's a very dense market. Um, Probably early 2000s, the EU took some proactive steps that I'm going to be honest, I think we should have done in the United States as well, um, which is about data privacy. And we're going to talk about that on our mainline topic here in a little bit. But The EU passed legislation that was about data privacy, and it was also about fair business practices. Now, one can argue whether they go too far, whether they don't. Let's just set that aside for a moment. So the idea is, if you are a private company, or publicly traded, private, doesn't matter. If you want to operate, 
and you want to sell your products inside the EU, you have to agree to the data privacy. They're law, flat out. Okay. So uh, a great example, a difference between us and them is that they have a right to know how a company uses their data. And it goes so far as if you call up any of your technology that you have owned, like if you call up Apple, if you call it Facebook, Meta, if you call up you know, anybody and you have a, most of them have like an online portal and you can say, Hey, my name is Doug. I, I want to know what of my data do you have and who are you sharing it with? And they are required by law within like so many days and like it's maybe even a quicker turnaround time than that to export a report to you. And you can see, oh, wow. So they know where I live. They, they've been monitoring my GPS pattern. They know where I go to work. They, they know what my salary is. They, you know, you, you go down the list. And they, oh, and they've shared it with, you know, uh, Nike. They've shared it with, you know, so they get extensive report. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing, to be honest with you. Um, However, all of that also gets into non-compete. So what happens is the reason why Apple is forced into many decisions, and the reality is they want to sell iPhones there. If you do not agree to these terms, you can't sell iPhones. And now you're taking yourself out of a very dense population of people that could buy iPhones. So it's about profit. That's why. So that's how they're able oh, to okay. do it. Because remember, the EU isn't one country. It's a lot of countries. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad you explained that to me because... Uh, I guess, and t is it kind of a monopoly? They're stopping Apple from like controlling the market, or is that diff totally different? It's really more about uh, fair business practices, and okay. it's about yeah, it is about monopolization. Because if you think about it, uh, they're the only ones that use lightning chargers, right? And in yeah. the EU, like, look, we want one. They're big on standards, you know. Uh, level playing field is oftentimes the term used. And if it's deemed that USB-C, which, by the way, it's important to note that USB-C is considered a universal standard. USB means universal serial bus, by the way. So there are entities that are not companies that define technology standards. It's been that way for many, many years. They're called ISO standards. Uh, when they do that, that means everybody in the entire industry agrees, hey, yes, this is the connector. Uh, yes. This is, uh, you know, the types of cables we're going to use. This is the monitors, this is, you know, all those kinds of things. But when you have a company that goes rogue and, and it, you know, be fair, it isn't only Apple. Sony loves to go rogue as well. Like with their yep. cameras, they have special cap. Sony had uh, not just on their cameras, but even on the PSP, they had their own memory chip that was called the duo chip, duo stick. And it was proprietary. Yeah. You could only buy that. Like, even though everybody else is just using SD cards or compact flash, right? So it's not unique to Apple, right? But the idea is that if your brain is big enough, um, they want standards if you're going to play in that market space. So that's really what the USB thing is about. This here, this whole situation really is uh, epic video games. They make Fortnite. They got into a lawsuit with him because uh, basically there was an argument between Epic Games and Apple. And Epic, they had their own store where they sold their video games, like Fortnite or, or things like microtransactions. Apple said, hey, you can't have your own store. So Apple removed Fortnite out of, so you couldn't have it on mobile or anything. They sued them. Uh, so recently, uh, they won. Now Apple is making all these concessions, like opening up the browser. Now, it's important to note, opening up your browser, they'll let you do Firefox. They'll also let you do um, Chrome. Uh, they're also allowing for side loading of apps, but all this is only in the EU for now. That's because the EU has the strictest sanctions. So a lot of this is stemming from Epic Games winning, and they're changing all the rules on the store uh, as a result because they lost that lawsuit. Epic Games said, look, you have an unfair business practice. You know, you, we want to be able to sell our video games the way that we want to. And, and the biggest thing is Apple takes a percentage. So they said, look, if you want, Anything, any app on our, our phone, you got to sell it through us and we got to take our 20%. And all, and, and Epic is like, well, that's way too much. No, we're not doing that. So, and that's what the lawsuit was about. And after that lawsuit, all of these other things will follow through. So I know it's a long drawn out thing, but it's been playing out in the media and it's important to know what all is driving it. Gotcha. All right. Last one, AI. We're going to close out on it. Yep. I'll let you take it. 
All right. So uh, creators of AI-generated George Carlin. So for those that don't know, he's a 60s, 70s, 80s comedian, uh, pretty dirty, kind of funny, uh, but that's a different style of comedy back then. Uh, so George Carlin's estate is suing the creators uh, that generated an AI uh, version of him to do mm-hmm. a stand-up bit. Yep. Again, consequences of AI. Um, I guess they didn't get the estate's permission. And now it's interesting. I've seen this go both ways. I've seen some estates say, you know what? We're good with it. It means that you know uh, our family member who was famous can live on in spirit. Others are like, heck no. I know Robin Williams' daughter, Zelda Williams, is very outspoken that Disney, what they did, they took a lot of his outtakes and they stitched them together and they they borderline basically trained an audio AI so they could basically have Robin Williams be the genie for Aladdin. Ooh, she went after them hard and they backed off. So that's the kind of thing we're getting to is now that you can uh, replicate uh, people. Uh, there's the whole thing about getting permission to do so. And does this family get any money? Does it honor their memory? Does it not? There's an ethical as- aspect of it. In my opinion, I-, I think it's dependent upon the family. I think the family should be the one to decide whether or not they think it's insulting. Because I do think one family would be like, you know, what? this is kind of cool. It's like dad can live on, right? He can still do work, <laughs> especially if they're getting residuals. That would be important, I would think. Oh, that would be big. Yeah. So, But other families like, no, 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 no. Only that person could do what they did, and we don't want to spoil it, which I respect, too. Yeah, and I think the strike last year, Mm -hmm. uh, SAG-AFTRA, their main strike was, hey, don't let AI replace us. You know, they had a lot of writers, directors, uh, even actors supporting them, but the fear is that AI-generated content, AI-generated scripts and uh, movie... uh, movie scripts yeah that's what i'm saying uh, is a concern because now you're taking creative writing out of the hands of those writers and directors and everything exactly I think this kind of relates you have a comedian that all these jokes all these conversations are in his mind ai is not going to completely replicate uh like him i mean it may sound just like him but mm-hmm. it's not going to have the soul of him i guess exactly and you're 100 percent right and part of that why there was such an outcry was there were situations on certain sets, Disney again, and a few others where they were taking background extras. Now let's be clear. Background extras don't make a lot of money anyway. And they would pull them to the side when they were on a set and they would bring them into a booth and they were taking 3d scans of them. And it was later, it actually happened on one of the Disney shows where one of the background extras was watching a show that that they were in the background on and they look and they're like, wait, I wasn't there that day when they shot this, but I'm there. They put the person in the background. That means it's a day that they didn't get paid too, which you don't make a lot of money as a background extra. And that's not right at all. No, I don't think. No, not at all. So their argument was they, they went on strike because they're like, if you're going to do this one, you need our permission Two, we need to get paid for it. And I a hundred percent agree. That's dirty. That's stealing. It really is. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to do that, I don't know what the right answer is, but maybe say you get 100% for a real in-person performance, maybe get 50, 25% for an AI performance. At least, uh, yes, you can use my image. Yes, you can use my 3D scan, but I at least need to uh, support myself, my family, and get paid for it. And they also need to have controls on it. If you're a big-time star, again, we were just looking at the Taylor Swift thing. (laughs) You can't make me naked. You can't, right. no sex scenes, right. no this, no that, because you have a brand, yeah. right? So I totally get it. Oh, man, yeah. this is just the tip of the iceberg on this AI stuff. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to get into our main topic here as I get set up. So as I tee this up, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Uh, we talked about smart homes before. Uh, today's topic is really about privacy inside of smart homes, um, what's listening. And this came about because I had a conversation with you and your wife of something that happened and I've heard people say this all the time. I know it's happened to me and it just kind of got us thinking, let's, let's talk about this briefly about the ethics of it. And has anybody else experienced this? Go ahead and, and set us up with what we were talking about with you and you and your wife, Ashley. So a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I've noticed for a while, but a couple of weeks ago, Ashley, uh, or yeah, my wife and I were talking about uh, something 
And, you know, a couple minutes later, it's on my phone, it's on my tablet, it's on my laptop. I was thinking, they got to be listening to me. I'm like, okay, no, maybe it's just a coincidence. But then, you know, we would talk about something else, just me and her talking, not on our cell phones, not using Alexa, Siri, Bixby, if you're one of those guys. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but any uh, smart assistance, yeah. just us talking, and then it shows up as a targeted ad. So yep. I uh, wanted to do some research, and I'm glad that we're making this our topic today. So doing some research, you know, uh, Alexa did get in trouble for uh, listening. I don't know that any of the other companies did. But I uh, read some stuff about Facebook. You know, they said, we're not listening to you, but uh, we are providing you targeted ads. We know your demographics. We know your location. We know what... Uh, people in your area like what's your age generation like so they're definitely trying to target you but they swear they're not listening to you so my question to you i guess uh kind of a long-winded uh story here have you ever noticed that on your phone your devices uh with your family or wife or kids oh yeah 100 percent. and there's been even experiments that i've done like i'll stand for my alexa and like I'll, I'll just be like uh nike air jordans nike air jordans nike air jordans <laughs> And then just see if it pops up on anything. And it's funny. Sometimes it actually works. No, that is 100% happened. It's gone so far as, you know, we'll have a conversation about even about a song. And the next thing I know in like my Pandora algorithm randomly, all of a sudden a song by the, by that artist will pop up. And we were just talking about that artist, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yes, I'm fully aware of it. And, you know, I've talked to people, there's there's two camps on this. There's people who are absolutely paranoid and they're like, why would you ever do that? Put these things in your home. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it all came about with, you'll hear the term IoT, Internet of Things. And all that means is, is all these devices are connected. Uh, and we have an image up just as an example of, there are, there's so many things in a home. If you have a smart TV, uh, if you got smart thermostat, there's smart sensors for lights. There's, you know, and me, I'm a gadget guy. I love all this. My home oh, is yeah. decked yeah. out. Um, but I don't have the concerns of privacy that some people do. And that's just personal. Uh, for me, I've always felt like privacy is a myth. It's, it's been gone since like the nineties. I mean, come on, you go to the ATM, they're going to know you're getting cash. They're going to see you on a camera, you know, you go out in public, I, but I do think that this is different because it's in your home. Now we will talk here in a moment about how to stay safe, but um, I think the creepiest things for me is that there was a situation with the elections where there was a hacker who had actually gotten control of somebody's um, into their home and they were able to talk through it through one of the Alexa devices. That. Yeah. And there was yeah. a guy and he's just like, uh, he was in his kitchen and he's like, Hey you, how you doing? I mean, that's scary. And then there was one where it was talking to some kids. Now, first of all, why would you put an Alexa with a camera in a kid's room? Uh, no stupid. Idea. Now I will say uh, in all of my rooms, I, I have the little hockey puck one, the um, mm -hmm. echo dot, no cameras. You don't do that. And if you do, you better block that camera, right? Um, so we're very careful with that. Now, they do these really cool things on the Alexa devices where they have these little slides on them now, where it's like these plastic yeah. guard things. To like cover a the privacy camera. screen? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, good. So I don't know. For me, it makes my life convenient. Uh, we use it all the time. We use it as an intercom system. I can control my lights. I, uh, Dude, I love it. But there is a trade-off. And that is your information is a commodity that could be sold. And so, yes, this has happened to me. I don't mind targeted ads. I'll be honest with you. If I would rather get ads, if I'm talking about motherboards and, and nerdy stuff, I'd rather get ads for computer equipment and, and nerdy geeky stuff than for like Viagra, you know, like something that I just don't have a need for. So it's like, I don't know, bro. That's that's my personal take. I'm not saying I'm like right. I, I I do there is a privacy element to this and there are scary stuff, like they're hacking and, and that sort of thing. So I don't know. I'm all in, but I'm a technology guy. I love gadgets. And I know that. And I but I don't expect anybody else to be like, oh well, yeah, well then I should be safe too. I mean, you don't have to agree with me. It's just my personal slant on it. So Oh, I totally agree. You know, uh, my wife and I have been together a long, long time, you know, back in the middle school, high school, probably not middle school, high school, college days, we always joked about, oh, uh, well, the FBI is listening. Mm -hmm. But uh, now that I'm adult, now that uh, I've seen unfortunate terrorist acts and uh, stuff happening around the world, 
my thought, and this may be controversial, I don't care what the government listens to me. If they're finding terrorists, they're finding terrorists. I, I know that might be a controversial thought. So, yeah, I'm not doing anything I wrong. I don't uh, say damn. anything that is shocking. You know, I'm yeah. not a criminal, thank God. So, yeah, not a Nazi, but I as far as we know. Think these things, uh, <laughs> no, nope, I'm good. <laughs> um, Oh, you messed up my. Time. I know. I threw him off. I threw him off my little, my little quip there. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, Nazi, me? sorry, sorry, sorry. So I've got it now. Back to that. Uh, they've got to be listening because you have Alexa that responds immediately to mm-hmm. a keyword. Yep. So it's got to be listening 24 seven just for that keyword. Same with Google. Same with Siri. I mean, they've got to be listening constantly. Uh, now, for those out there that are worried, I know there's options on your phones, your devices. Yep. Maybe not the home speakers, but the devices to push a button where you have to, or an option to, you have to push a button. So if you don't want the hot key or hot word uh, trigger, then, Mm -hmm. so that would be one way for our people out there listening to this. Yeah. And we'll talk about defense here. So, you know, I get it. I believe that you can be safe with it. I mean, there's some suggestions here that I think are a bit out there, but. Um, most devices you can turn things off, like the smart TV. I uh, just don't connect it to Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. It's that simple. Now, now, when I say that, I want to be clear: you got to be connected to Wi-Fi if you're going to use the apps on the television. Uh, but a lot of people, like, let's say you're not doing, it. let's say you have a Roku or an Apple TV or a Google Cast, then go ahead and just disable the Wi-Fi. If you if you're not yeah. using the apps, don't connect the TV. Don't do that. Um, some TVs, if they have, uh, some do have cameras on them. You know put some black electrical tape on it. You can block it. Uh, so there's things like that that you can do. Now, there's some that they say, you know, keeping your Wi-Fi on 24 by 7, turn it off when you leave. I think that's, I don't know, I think that's kind of goofy. And why yeah. I think that's goofy is because if you have bought into the technical estate and I want my thermostat to stay connected, I want my, you know, yeah. I need it to because it's running. security cameras outside. It's running but... my house. Yeah, I got security. Yeah. And then I've got like backup for my security so that if Wi-Fi gets yeah. cut or whatever, it, it switches over to cellular. I've got all those kind of redundancies in place. Um, yeah. You know, so I don't really agree with that one. I don't think that helps you much. Uh, disabling your, your phone and uh, your camera and your uh, microphone on certain devices. Uh, there are settings yeah. on a lot of these things. Um, keeping your devices up to date. That's huge. Uh, firmware patching, because that's how you keep. Uh, exploits from happening, like uh, people taking advantage of it. Uh, but the big one is, I think, the best one on this list. And this is really important and not talked about a lot, especially when you're in the media, uh, firewalls. So if you have a router in your house for your internet, guess what? There's most likely, I'm going to say like 98% of the time, there's a firewall built into it. And that means that even though Internet uh, of Things, IoT devices like Nest thermostats and that sort of thing, they, they're a direct connection to the Internet. Guess what? They got to go through your router and your router is a firewall. And so all those things are using one single IP address. Uh, and that's a good thing because uh, that means that it makes it more difficult for those to be exploited. Now, these are in cases for hacking and that sort of thing. Right. Um, when it comes to companies like having Amazon listen to you. Yeah, they're going to. There is a reason why. And we've said this before. Alexa is so much better than Siri. I mean, there's a reason. It's because AI is better the more you train it. And Amazon's yeah. admitted, like you said, Doug, they listen to us all the time. They've been training. Mm-hmm. But that's but look how much better their AI assistant is. It, it really does make a difference. Yeah, I can have uh, free-flowing conversations. I don't have iPhone. My wife does, but she doesn't use Siri. So free-flowing conversations with Alexa. Google, not really. I mean, and it's gone downhill. I don't know. It's gotten worse. Google's because not. Bard's yeah. coming up. Maybe they're taking away their resources maybe. from the assistant and moving it to their Bard. Yeah. Uh, kind of similar to Chappie GPT. But Alexa is much more of a conversationalist than yeah. just a... Ask me a point blank question. I'll give you a point blank answer. It'll be interesting with Alexa's training. Yes, due to spying on you. Just let's call it out. Okay. It's trained on us. It's interesting how well it will do though when they combine a language learning model into it, like what you're talking about. Uh, Apple is going to announce this year. They have their own chat GPT type uh, AI that they're going to integrate into Siri. Hopefully it'll make her better. And the reality is, is that Siri is just not as responsive and not as good just because Apple is big on privacy. 
I mean, they really are. And so they don't, they don't, they don't creep on you in the same way. So. Yeah. Not to dog iPhone at all, but I think Siri, because of the privacy concerns, like you said, has kind of been in last place as far as not very intuitive, uh, not very. She has to like uh, go out to the internet for things all the time. Like, yes, you could just go do your own Google search. (laughs) He's well, here's what I found on the internet. And she like, doesn't understand what you're even asking, you know? So, yeah. All right. So if anybody else has an opinion on this, feel free to shoot us a message. You can put it inside of our comments on YouTube, Um, you know, and uh, hopefully when uh, we get big enough and we have a wired nerdy app that you can put on all your smart devices, we'll be monitoring you and we'll know uh, what you want to talk about on the show or how stupid or dumb we look. So, Absolutely. (laughs) All right, Doug. Well, I think that's going to round it out for episode number two. This is a fun one. This is some cool topics. Uh, Speaking of AI, I just want to point it out. the last episode in this episode, uh, my background. See that? See that? Yeah. My oh, virtual background. Nice. Yeah. I've been messing around with some uh, AI images. And this one is, uh, I think, the prompt that I have. Uh, if you guys can't see, it's a, I'm in a castle with a bunch of arcades. I don't know. I'm just trying random crazy stuff. Um, Very nice. It, yeah. So that's what this one is. But I'm just trying different ones, mixing it up, you know, injecting some AI into this. So it's one of those fun things I've just been kind of messing with lately. So we're going to bring it on home. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this episode number two. It's been fun. We have some really cool ones coming up. Uh, Doug, what's our par- parting blessing that you have for us? Now that you're not frozen. Yeah. I'm not frozen. We are going to end this uh, good, you know. <laughs> um, you know, not we struck, talked Doug. a lot about uh, AI and stuff on there. All I can say to kind of close this show out is be careful. You know, if you have, like you said, uh, AI technology in your children's room or um no cameras, cameras in a vulnerable area no don't no, do that don't do it so uh <laughs> as a uh, now former cop we'll talk about that later um uh, talk about uh financial safety you know password safety uh, mm-hmm. we can probably do a whole episode about that in the future that'd be good for our listeners so we should have alex be back, careful the cybersecurity there. hacker guy that's what we should absolutely. do absolutely he could yeah. have a great show with us yep he, he yeah, might scare us, actually. Is, That's what I think. He's going to scare the pants uh, off of us. Yeah. <laughs> He'll say, listening. They're doing more than listening. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, to wrap it up, uh, thank you all for listening so much. You know, just be careful out there. There's people out there, uh, Nigerian princes and all that just <laughs> they need your money. steal your money. And, <laughs> yeah. so, well, no, it might be Taylor so Swift. Taylor Swift's going to call your house. Yeah. She's going to try to get money out of you. <laughs> If you see uh, Travis Kelsey show up to your house with a baseball bat, <laughs> it's not going to be good. <laughs> All right, everybody. You have a good yeah. one, and we will catch you next week. Take care. See ya.